Welcome to Pix Insight for Beginners, my new series where I'll take you through the basics of editing in Pix Insight so that you can start with an image like this and end up with an image like this. In this first episode, we're going to do it in just 10 short minutes. So stick around and I'll show you how. G'day, I'm Paul from Polyman Astro. Now I'm assuming you're here because you'd like to learn how to use PixInsight to do some processing. I'm also assuming that you're probably already using some stacking software like Deep Sky Stacker. So in this series, PixInsight for Beginners, I'm going to run with that assumption and we're going to start with an already stacked image and build from there. In today's episode, we're going to dispel the myth that PixInsight is super difficult to use. We're going to use just four processes and we're going to get an image that I'd happily share with family and friends in just 10 short minutes. Let's jump across to PixInsight and get started. So when we first open up PixInsight, this is what it looks like. This blank section in here, all this space, is called the workspace. This is where all the magic happens. So let's open up our image straight out of Deep Sky Stacker. You'll notice it looks quite black. You can see some stars, maybe the hint of a nebulosity there as well, but that's about it. And that's perfectly normal because this image is not stretched. All our processes, everything that we're going to do to our images, can be found up here under the Process, All Processes menu. And they're all listed alphabetically. The first process we want is called screen transfer function, and this is what it looks like. I apply it by using the radiation symbol here, which you'll see is called auto stretch. All it does, it's, it's one job, is to stretch the image in memory so that I can see what it looks like at, at any particular stage. It doesn't permanently apply that though. So if I save this image right now, even though it looks stretched, if I save this image right now and then reopened it, it would just look black again with a few stars. You'll notice that the image looks green. That's a gradient, a light pollution gradient. Sometimes, depending on your camera, it might look red, it might look blue, it could be all sorts of different colors, but it's a light pollution gradient and I need to get rid of it. And that's what the second process is going to be for. So again, under process, all processes, this time I am looking under A, for automatic background extractor. And this is what it looks like. When you first open up automatic background extractor, uh, it will be set at default settings. Okay, and you can expand and contract sections of automatic background extractor by just clicking on these sections here and they'll expand and contract. The only two things that we need to change are here where it says function degree I want to change that to 2, and my target correction, I want to change that to subtraction. We don't need to know why we're changing those at this point, I'll do that in a later video. But these settings are nice, and they will work for pretty much all of your images. These are the settings I use for all my images, and they work perfectly fine. I don't really have to adjust anything else. To apply automatic background extractor to my image, I press the square button, and you can see it, it says apply. Once it's done, two new images open, and you'll notice they have names appended to them. ABE, ABE background. So let's discuss what they are. So I've got my original image that came out of Deep Sky Stacker, and I've stretched it in memory. And we've said it's got this horrible green light pollution gradient. The ABE background, if I stretch that using the auto stretch screen transfer function. That's all that green that I want to get rid of. And the ABE file is the result of getting rid of it. So, so this correction of subtraction here, literally all that happened was that on this original image here, integration, this green background was just subtracted and now it's not there anymore. So this is now a new image to work with. The third process that we're going to use is called dynamic crop. So under process all processes, dynamic crop. And its job is just to get rid of the nasty stacking artifacts around the edges of our image. 
and it's a really simple process to use. All I need to do is think about where do I want to start my crop and left click and hold. And then I can drag a rectangle to the other corner where I want the crop to stop. And then I just let go. Okay, I can adjust my crop if I got it wrong. See how there's this little plus symbol here? And at the moment, it's just got a clean white box across it. When I get to the corner, if you look carefully, and you may need to see how I've got these two arrows, you may need to stretch your image a little bit so that you can, you can see it a bit clearer. But if I move that box across, see how it gets a little, it looks now looks like a bit of Lego. It's got that little white corner to it. That's just telling me now if I let, left click and hold, I can drag in that corner and I can move it and adjust it. And I can do the same thing over here. As long as I've got that Lego block, when I left click and hold, it only moves that side. Okay, if I, if I don't have that Lego block, I end up moving the whole rectangle. So I've got to be careful there and make sure if I just want to adjust a side that I have that Lego block. And then when I'm ready, I just click on this green tick, which is execute. And now I'm cropped. But if I save this right now, again, it hasn't actually been stretched. So it will just look like a black image. That's what our final process is for. If I go to process all processes and choose histogram transformation, this is what's going to allow me to permanently stretch. And the nice thing about related processes in PixInsight is that they can borrow information from each other. So at the moment, this image looks quite nice. If I could have that permanently saved, that would be great. And to do that's really easy. Since I've been using the screen transfer function, if I just grab this little triangle in the corner here, left click and hold, I can drag it. See how I get that little hourglass? I can drag it onto the bottom of histogram transformation here and let go. And something's happened. And if you've used curves in Photoshop, you'll recognize that's just a curve. It, it's That's the curve that's been applied to our image to stretch it. And to apply it again, I just press that, that box symbol to apply that stretch. And now my image is permanently stretched. Don't panic that it suddenly went white. The reason it went white is because it's now had, in memory, two stretches done to it. It's, had, it, it's got the screen transfer function applied to it in memory, and then I've just applied that stretch again, so it's double stretched. I just need to turn the screen transfer function off, and I do that by clicking on the reset button here. Notice how they all these little processes have a little reset button in the corner. If I just press the reset button, the screen transfer function is now turned off and this object is permanently stretched. I can save this image now, just like in any program, I can just go to save as, I'm going to save it as a JPEG, so you might have to select JPEG from the list here. Go save it as a JPEG and I'm going to call it Lagoon. Okay, these are just warnings. Don't panic. These are just warnings to say that by using JPEG, you're compressing your file. PixInsight is big on trying to make sure you understand that you're compressing something and potentially losing information. But when we're saving a final image, JPEG is fine. I want the quality to be 100% though. And that's my image saved. That That's now something I can open up on my desktop and I can have a look at it. There it is. It's permanently stretched. It looks quite nice. That's something I'd happily put on my Facebook, on my Instagram, so my family and friends can see what I've been imaging. So there you go, guys. In just 10 minutes, we've created a pleasing image that we can share with family and friends on Facebook or Instagram. It's all about muscle memory, essentially. Once you've used those four processes over and over again, you'll get used to them and it'll become second nature. There should be a link shown here now to my next video on histogram transformation. Screen transfer function is great, but we can do better. If you'd like to learn how to use histogram transformation efficiently, jump on that link. Thanks for watching.